Hi, so in this video, we're going to discuss pre roll, post roll, and the count function. I don't want to bore you guys, but when I started learning how to make beats, I learned with an MPC 2000 back in the late 90s, early 2000s, around there. One of the issues I had with the MPC cost a lot of money at the time. So the one I had, it wasn't mine, so I had to return it. So I got a computer program, and at the time, the program that I was using didn't have pre count function like the MPC. I'm gonna show you how I dealt with this issue. I even did this with the MPC. If I didn't have the pre-count, I would let the sequence play. Once it loops back around, I'll start making my beat. So that's exactly what I'm gonna show you guys right now. So what I did, press record, once it came back around, then I actually started uh, laying down my snare. And that's the way I used to do things. And I know for a fact that people still do it this way. And it doesn't matter how you do it as long as the results you're getting are amazing. That's what matters. So let's undo this. And what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to open the transport. And I'm going to turn on count. I'm going to turn it on. And as you can see, I have it set for one bar. So if you double click this, this window's gonna open up. I'm not gonna focus on anything up here. Make sure this option is enabled only during record and you wanna input the amount of bars you wanna use. So over here, I used one bar. It's gonna count one bar before you actually start recording. Press okay. Let's see what happens. Much easier, isn't it? They both got me to the same place. Let's undo that and let's uh, do this another way. So I'm gonna shut off that pre-count and I'm gonna turn on pre-roll. One of the things you might notice, this flag appeared. If I take pre-roll off, well, the flag is still there. It just changes color. Basically, this kind of works the same way. So I can put it right here. Watch what happens when I press record. So I can actually start here if I wanted to. So one of the interesting things about using pre-roll, you're actually hearing this whole section and it's not gonna record until it reaches here. So if I were to do this, So in order to start recording, you have to get to your timeline selection. That's the only way you're going to record. To be honest with you guys, pre-roll is a fantastic function, but I don't use it when I'm working with MIDI, although you can. All right, so I'm going to show you pre-roll, post-roll with audio. Over here, I have a Vox track, and I'm going to actually record something. I'm going to turn on input monitoring and record. Let's go. Hi, so we're going to discuss pre-roll and post-roll. All right, so let's play that back. Hi, so we're gonna discuss pre-roll and post-roll. So let's say you're working with voiceovers, or you're recording a song, whatever it is. You lay down all the tracks, you like the beginning, but you don't like the rest of it. And as you can see, it's not a big part. So there's a couple of ways you can actually do it. Most people, what they would do, they would create a new track, and I'm guilty, I've done this as well. Let's get rid of the transport. And what they'll do is, they'll get rid of that and... Hi, so we're gonna discuss pre-roll and post-roll. So this is the way a lot of people do it and that's fine. I got a session once and I had about 10 to 15 tracks because this is exactly what they did. And it's not like both of these parts are overlapping each other. So you can actually just do the edit and just bring this part up if you wanted to. It's just more work. All right, so let me show you a better way of doing this. All right, so I have this one take here. I'm not really happy with this part here, so I want to get rid of that. So now we're going to turn on pre-roll. Remember the flag that we discussed earlier? There's multiple ways to move it. You can grab it with the mouse, or you can change the numbers right here, as you can see. So I prefer to just grab it with the mouse. Let's get rid of this uh, transport window. 
All right, so this is what I want to do. I want to replace the section we don't like. I want to keep the beginning. I also want to keep the end. In order to do that, make sure you have your timeline selection all set up and you're good to go. Hi, so we're going to discuss pre-roll. Great, so I was able to replace this. I was able to keep the beginning. Now there's another function here, which we didn't discuss, post-roll. And as you can see, it created another flag. And basically what's going to happen, I don't know if you guys noticed, it stopped right here. It's going to actually play from here and it's going to end here. Hi, so we're going to discuss pre-roll and post-roll. So, all right, I want to get rid of this specific section right here. So basically it works the same. Set your in and out and let's go. Hi, so we're going to discuss pre-roll and post-roll. So there you go, guys. That's how easy it is to use pre-roll and post-roll. In this video, I didn't cover quick punch mode. If you right-click your record button, there's a couple of different options. I decided not to get into that. There's also some information regarding delay compensation. But if you guys are interested, let me know. I'll be happy to make the video.